If you've ever felt nervous to speak in public or you got to give a presentation and you got all these knots inside, then listen to what I'm about to tell you because uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can help calm the nerves, get the butterflies kind of moving in formation so that your jitters don't get in the way of your presentation because you've got a great message that you got to get across. And listen, I got to tell you this. I grew up like this small town, like I actually grew up on a farm. I was a shy, introverted, redheaded kid with freckles. Uh, I was scared to get up front and do show and tell, right? So trust me, I totally understand. But, you know, then I went on in my career to give thousands of presentations on stages, small audiences, big audiences. And uh, how did I do that? Well, I want to walk you through some of the things that I uh, teach my students when they go through my persuasive presentations uh, program and workshop. Um, and here's the thing. What a lot of what a lot of uh, uh, fear comes from. And again, if you can relate, uh, it's the imposter syndrome, right? And it's a psychological term referring to a pattern of behavior where people doubt their accomplishments and have a persistent, often internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now, it's not just that. Uh, also, the stage is, is such a vulnerable place because all these eyes are on us. And if we fail deep down, uh, it's just, we're, we're scared psychologically. We're scared that we're going to get rejected by the tribe. And that's like the ultimate, uh, you know, scary thing from an evolutionary perspective. So anyways, I teach these eight different ways that you can uh, lower your fear before you give a presentation. Uh, I'm, I don't have time to go through all those, but let me just go through a couple for you that may help some quick wins here, right? And so here's the first one. It's actually a reframe about what you're there to do and it's all about being here to serve uh, because the more you get your eyes off of yourself and on to the people you are serving the better you will do now let me let me illustrate this so for those of you who don't know before i was speaking on stages teaching leadership those things like that i originally uh was a minister and i was a preacher and i was a young guy right 25 26 and I remember when there's this big accident happened in the city with the subways and a bunch of people were killed. It was a tragic thing. Well, anyways, a call came to our church asking if one of our ministers could do the funeral. Well, all the senior ministers were away at some convention. And it was just like all us junior, juniorlings running around. And uh, so anyways, I was like the, the oldest of the, of the young. And so they were like, hey, um, you got to go do this funeral. Now, I'd only been to two funerals in my entire life, and it was never to take notes and learn how to do it, right? So I, right away, I'm, I'm freaking out like, oh, I got to do this. And I gathered a bunch of my friends and like, hey, you're going to sing and you're going to do this. And really, I was just bringing them all for, for moral support. And for the next three days, I'm just like dreading this experience. And um, I still remember it so clearly. I, I get to the funeral home, and the person who died, it was tragic. It was a young woman, you know, maybe 28 years old, and a young, young family. And she's, you know, they've got the casket there, and people are coming in and, and mourning and, and uh, you know, crying. And it was overwhelming. It was so overwhelming. I'm like, what am I doing here? I have no idea what I'm doing. And I pulled into this side room, and uh, I was, people are walking by. And I'm thinking like, I just, I can't wait till this is over. And, and I hate that this call came to me that I have to be here. And this has been such a tough week. And, and then it just like hit me. And I was like, I was like, dude, you're not the one that's had the tough week here. All these people have had the tough week. They just lost either their sister, their cousin, their daughter, you know, whatever she was to all these people, uh, they had lost her. And I was like, these are the people that have had the tough week. And in that moment, I was just like, you need to get out there and comfort people. And that's all I went with. Now, I still felt nervous, but I'm telling you, my, my nervousness, fear, jitters went from like uh, off the charts 100%, uh, probably down to about 25%. And I was able to go out there and do my job, which was to get a message across of comfort, of hope, you know, whatever I could muster up. And uh, that's such an important thing. Now, that's a really dramatic example, right? But even in your workplace, you've got to give a presentation or maybe one of the senior executives has asked you to get up and, I don't know, share a report on something and you're thinking, oh, like, why do I have to do it? And I could really blow this. You got to get your eyes off of yourself, right? Get your eyes off of yourself and get them on to 
the people that you're speaking to and you're like, I'm here to serve them, right? And what are you there to serve them with? When you get really clear on that, like this is going to help them, then it takes that, uh, it takes those jitters off of you. Also, on a deeper level, it connects to a value of yours, a value of service. I, I don't know anyone who doesn't have some piece of that value in them. And when we connect to that value to serve, we gather strength there. And so a lot of cool studies on, on values and stuff like that. And let me just go down to uh, number... Let's go to... Uh, number 10. This is actually a cool one. It's about leveraging the mind-body connection and manipulating the body for an increase in confidence. If you have seen Amy Cuddy's TED Talk, um, you'll know what I'm saying here. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a really great thing. But basically, she and her team did a bunch of research, and also there's a bunch of other people who've done research that sometimes when you change the body, it changes the internal state. And that when people get in expansive postures, what it does is it increases levels of testosterone and decreases levels of cortisol, which is actually what you want when you have to go give a presentation, right? Bring the stress down, bring you know the confidence up. And they found that just by holding power poses, that it would increase people's confidence. I know it sounds like a magic trick, right? Like, will this really work? But here's the thing. I remember I, remember I was, I think it was in Ohio, and I had to go speak at an HR breakfast. It was early in the morning. And I'm not sure why, but just, I went in the room and I set up and all these people are coming in and, and just something, something triggered me in a way where all of a sudden I just felt insecure. I had no idea why. I'd done this presentation many times. I knew people were going to love it. I knew it was going to help them in their leadership. But I just had this feeling of insecurity come over me. And that happens to us from time to time. But what you'll notice that when you start to feel insecure, you start to constrict, you start to shrink down. And it's that regression that is going to kill your presentation. Now, I picked up on that, right? Because I do this all the time. I picked up on that and I'm like, what's going on? So I left the room and I went out into the hallway, made sure nobody was, was watching. And I just walked around the hallway and I got my arms up. I got my body big. You can see them on the screen here. I got my body really big. And that completely changed some things for me where I was like, okay, that insecurity is gone. I got over that. And I, I leveraged that mind-body uh, connection, right? And so that was me manipulating my body for an increase in confidence. And I've gone to places where if I, um, I remember another time where I was going and it was a really, really big, a really big audience. And before they, before they let people in the doors, right? You know, if you've been at a conference and the doors are closed, well, you know, so I'm the guy in there inside getting everything ready. And of course the sound guys are doing their thing. And there's just like a, a sea of chairs, right? Just chairs as far as you can see. And I remember starting to feel like nervous and anxious about that. And I'm like, whoa, 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 buddy. You, you can't, you can't go there. And so I got my body posture big and I just started saying things like, this is my room. Like, I own this place. I own this room. And when people come through those, those doors, they're coming into my space, right? So I wasn't the visitor. They're the visitor. And I, back to point one, and I'm going to do a great job serving them. So those are just two of uh, 10 different techniques I teach in my persuasive presentations workshop. And uh, go ahead and, and try them out. And I think you'll see that it makes an immediate difference. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to overcome stage fright, how to give presentations, how to design and structure them, how to tell stories in a captivating way, then be sure to check out my Captivating Presentations Workshop. It's called Persuasive Pres Presentations. And I'll leave a link right below this video. You can go check it out, find out all the details of when our next time is. And it would be great to see you there. But until then, remember, if you are nervous about speaking in public, no one was more nervous than me. I have all my stories, which I won't bore you about, of early days of having to give speeches and bombing and doing terrible because I was so insecure and I was so afraid. And if I can, if I can do it, you can do it too. All right? Take care.